Coming from someone who has had her own fair share of Canada study visa rejection, I think that I'm in a place to share reasons why Canada study visa tend to be rejected a lot. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I had three visa rejections before I finally got my study visa. Before we get straight into this video, I'd like to put a disclaimer out there to let you know that I am not a licensed immigration consultant, neither am I a licensed immigration lawyer, and this, whatever I'm going to be saying in this video, is actually not a legal advice, and I would advise you that you try to do your own research and do proper findings, yes, and so let's get straight into today's video. Walk out the door in my little black dress. Been a long day and I need to distress. Sunset. In case you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Lovelyn and you're welcome to my channel. If you're a new subscriber or a returning subscriber, it's so good to have you here. So today I'm going to be sharing with you top five reasons why Canada study visa tend to be rejected a whole lot. Number one on my list is the purpose of your visit. So before an officer states the reason why your visa is being rejected, it would be stated there that I'm not satisfied that you would leave Canada at the end of your stay based on so, so, so. So when you're putting in your application, you even need to have, first thing you need to have in your mind is to know that you have to be able to prove to the visa officer that you're going to leave Canada at the end of your stay. Going back to talking about visa rejection based on the purpose of your visit, in your visa application, it needs to be very clear the purpose of your visit. It needs to be very clear that you're coming to study. You need to attach your letter of acceptance, your school admission letter, and not just that alone. You also need to be able to show it in your in your statement of purpose, your letter of study, that you're actually coming to study. And that at the end of your study, you are going to leave. Another reason for rejection based on the purpose of your visit is when there's like a downgrading in your academic qualification. You can say you have a master's in nursing already and then you don't want to like come to do like a diploma in healthcare assistant. It doesn't make sense. Like it raises a question of like the purpose of your visit is not clear. It's a different thing maybe oh you have a master's in nursing and then for some reasons your employment history You've been working like all your life as a healthcare assistant. Like that is understandable. You can say that, oh, then that way you can explain why you want to come and, you know, study diploma in healthcare assistant. But you have a master's in nursing already. All your life you've been a nurse. Your work history shows that you've been a nurse all your life. It just doesn't gel together. And all Number that. two on my list for top five rejection reasons would be travel history. Applications tend to be rejected based on your travel history, being that, oh, there's no proof that, you know, you've gone to maybe another country and all of that, because they also need to know that you've probably been to another country and you return back at the stipulated date that you were supposed to go back to your own country. Fine, it's understandable that, oh, you've probably not traveled out of Nigeria before, you've probably not traveled out of your home country before, you've probably lived in just one country all your life you need to be able to prove to the visa officer that even though you've not traveled out of your country before you've actually traveled within your own country and also how you have always of a very good conduct whenever you're like outside your own territory because the visa officer needs to know that you would return back at the end of your stipulated stay in Canada. So it's advisable that if you can afford to travel, you can travel to like neighboring countries. If you're Nigerian, you can maybe travel to Togo or Benin Republic or Ghana or somewhere that is just really close by that would not cost you so much just to like, you know, build up your travel history and all of that. And if by chance you're not able to like travel to these neighboring countries, you might just want to be able to prove it in your letter of explanation that you've, in your letter of study, that you've traveled to places in your country, like you've explored other states in your country. The reason on my list will be based on family ties in Canada and in your own country. So basically, reason why visa tends to be rejected based on your family ties in canada and family ties in home country is because they need to they need to know that there's something that 
you know, has like a connection with you in your country that would give you a reason to go back to your country. You need to be able to prove to them that, oh, you have families back home that you would want to like return back to. You probably have a business back home that you have to like come back to. You probably have to also prove to them that maybe you are the first child in your family and you are the head to your family's company or something. There just needs to be like something that you need to show to them that, oh, there's something back home that you have to return to to do. Maybe you have a job that you're currently doing maybe when you're living for when you're putting in your application you can just let it be known in your application that you're currently working and when you're coming to study you are going to have to apply for a study leave and then at the end of your study you will be going back home to like resume back at your workplace to like maybe you know start up a new position or like you just need to be able to like show that there's something in your own country that you're going to go back to and also family ties in Canada. You also need to like let the officer know that if you if by chance you have a relative in Canada or something, you also need to be able to prove that the fact that oh maybe your brother or your sibling or somebody that you know is your immediate like your nuclear relative, the fact that you have that person there doesn't mean that oh, you want to take advantage of that to come and be there. But you're just coming to Canada to study and you'll be going back at the end of your study. I've been saying going back, going back, because you need to be able to prove to them that you're only coming to study for like one year or two years, and at the end of your study, you're going to go back. Even like, You have to be able to prove it to them that, oh, you're only coming to Canada based on the purpose for which you're coming, and you're going to leave. Like that, I'm going to leave as to like, you always have to like mention it and let them know that, oh, you'll be leaving, I don't, I don't know I me mean, like mentioning mentioning every time after every paragraph i'll leave or something but you need to be able to prove you need to have enough proof that oh there's something that you have back home and you're coming back to so number four on my list will be based on your personal assets and your financial status i'm going to imagine these two together sometimes they give reasons based on just your financial status and sometimes it's a mix of both financial status and personal assets in your visa application you need to be able to demonstrate to the visa officer that you are financially stable enough to study in canada whether you are sponsoring yourself or you are being sponsored by somebody so usually it's expected of you to be able to demonstrate financial stability and in a way to and to show this you need to be able to show that you can afford the years of your study in canada and not just studying alone but you can also afford every other expenses that comes with living in canada so basically you're expected to show in showing your proof of fund is expected of you to show the school fees for your years of study and also ten thousand canadian dollars per year for your living expenses that's if you're outside quebec but if you're in quebec you're supposed to show about eleven thousand canadian dollars for living expenses per year also if you're going to be sponsored by someone maybe your parents or your siblings or anything Fine, it's showing that oh, this person has the money to sponsor you. That person who is sponsoring you also needs to be able to show that they are not using all their money to send you to Canada. The officer still wants to know that after you are being sent, that your sponsor still has enough money to be able to take care of whatever it is that you need to take care of back home. So all of this needs to be properly explained. Also, whoever is going to be sponsoring you, also has to like maybe provide like you know proof of employment or a proof of business ownership or something that they just have that can sustain them while they sponsor you and be sure that whatever it is that the person needs to take care of back home is not going to affect them sponsoring you or them sponsoring you is not going to affect their own financial stability back home. Mm. Lastly, on my list of top five reasons for Canada study visa rejection would be employment history and employment prospects. Most times, this re this rejection based on employment history and employment prospects they don't come like together. Sometimes they are denied based on like employment history separately and employment prospects separately. But the reasons why, but explaining the reason why. It will be denied based on employment history would be maybe 
for like after like there's a study gap after you've maybe finished school since like 2015 and then you're just applying for Canada study visa in 2023 like there's a question to ask so what have you been doing 2016 17 18 19 like you've now like you don't have like any employment history to show that you've been working all these years or something that even if you've been working it can also be described as like maybe study gap or have you taken a gap but that's different at least maybe you've worked but at this point this one will be based on employment history you've not worked there's nothing so you've not worked since 2015 you've not studied since 2015 so like that will be based on your employment history and then talking about employment prospects if by chance you're coming to study a course that's back in your country like there's obviously like not enough jobs that you can do with that course that you're coming to study that's another reason why the visa officer might think that mm -mm, like this is not like your coming to study this course does not does not give you a chances of getting a job back in your country or like back in your country your country is known for like you know lack of employment opportunities that's also another reason why visa tends to be rejected so i miss all of these reasons is also very important that whatever documents that you're going to be submitting for your visa application if by chance all these documents are not completed and adequately compiled together it can also lead to visa rejection so i just listed top five reasons for canada study visa rejections i missed many other reasons for canada study visa rejections i hope that you've learned one or two from this video and that if you are about to put in your visa application. I hope that this helps you understand better how to compile your application and where to like dot your T's and cross your I's. Thank you so much for stopping by again and thank you for watching my video. And I hope that you come back next Wednesday and next Saturday to watch my video. And I love you. Bye.